Okay, so this project here is another one of those tote septic tanks that I did a while back. And I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys kind of the details of how to connect these, what's going on inside of the tank, etc. And uh, then we'll get it brought out to the job and buried. Now, I, like I stated in the other video, these are good for off-grid, tiny house type situations. But this is not a, uh, a normal, standard, up-to-par septic tank. Proceed at your own risk. So to start, I've got this four inch T and this is what's gonna be inside of the tank. But they're a little bit too large to fit inside of the top opening on the tote. So what I do is I run them in my toaster oven there uh, to about 220 degrees. And as you can see, that PVC gets floppy at that temperature. And then, uh, well, as you can see, they're too big to fit through that opening. You know, in hindsight, I don't think I'd use T's. On the last one I did, I used 45s, which uh, have been working really well. Even a 90. Any older septic system that I've seen inside was using 90s. And then they would just drill a small hole on the top side of the 90 to break the vapor lock. Okay, now one thing I wanna do is I wanna rotate this until my numbers are on the top. And I can use that as a reference now when I do this other side. So hopefully you guys can see what's going on in there. You know, the original one I had 45s, which, which worked out really well, fairly well. Some of the older tanks I've been in, I've seen a, just a 90 with a couple of holes up here on the top. Like I said, to break the vapor lock, that way the water can still get in, go throughout to the other side. And that fits in here, no problem. The T is kind of difficult. Okay, you can see the pipes in there. We've got the T's on. And what we're gonna do now is we'll figure out what tank is gonna be our solids tank. That's gonna go first in the series. And get that one wired into place. Now, if you think about this, technically you only need a solids block on your solid tank. This side, it doesn't really matter. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this pipe wired into place before we push these totes together. We're gonna silicone this. Technically, you only need to silicone your solids tank. Once the water flows through into this tank, your leach field outlets which are going to be lower on the tank around midway are always going to keep that water level below this pipe in theory okay that's it nothing fancy very crude but watertight Okay, these are wired together as you can see they have become one so we've got our solids tank and then this is where the liquids are going to go from here they're going to head out into the leach field so the next thing to do is wrap these with something if you put these right in the dirt um you are sort of prone to potentially having a lot of dirt pressure pushing on these tanks you will have water pressure pushing pushing back out but uh, nonetheless you may want to wrap these in something. I don't know if it's 100% necessary. It's just something that I've done and had great luck with. I use carpet 
previously, which worked really well. And this time around, I have some solar water heater panels that were retired, and they're gonna be perfect for this. You know, something else that would work really great would be like an election sign. I know there's a lot of those hanging around certain times of the year. Just something that's synthetic, something that can uh, bear the pressure of soil pushing in, something that can also handle direct dirt contact, soil contact, and won't deteriorate immediately. Okay, here's what we've got. It's all wired on, nice and sturdy. And all that that's gonna do is alleviate the pressure from the dirt pushing in between the cage onto the actual plastic coat. So I got a little tear there, but I have a spare piece I'm gonna drop in there. So yeah. Okay, here's our hole. Grade it out. And we'll see if the tank will fit. Tank is in the hole, and we are about 12 to 14 inches below grade with the top of the tank here. And then we'll run our leach out here. Okay, let's see where we are. So we've got the tank here. I've got my two leach field outlets drilled right here. And uh, I'm just a little ways from the top. I'm about let's say a foot, a foot and a half down from the top of the tote. Two of them. They're gonna run in solid triple wall to right here and then we're gonna begin our leach field right here with the perf pipe. Okay, this is what we're after here, those and I just put a level on them, and what we're looking for is a quarter inch per 10 feet. You don't want much fall on these, and we're pretty close. So this is solid, and from here we switch to perf, and we get a bunch of gravel and rock and rubble in here. Yep. Did you need both of these? I sure did. All right, here's our leech field, the beginnings of such. We're five feet deep and three feet wide. And just for reference, we're a couple feet below the outlets on the leech field. Okay, you can see here, we've got our first layer of concrete in. All the dirt is covered. These are a lot bigger of pieces than what we're gonna put on top. So 
we're going to use a lot of fist size rubble to bring this up to the grade of the pipes and we'll cover it with some more small stuff All right, the leech lines are in here and we've got the grade set. Basically, we're just splitting a little bit of that bubble on both of these and the holes are aligned down. Now we're just gonna start packing some rubble around them and uh, then we'll, we'll fill them the rest of the way. All right, this is just a Portland cement and sand mix right here. One shovel full of Portland cement to three shovelfuls of soil, native soil. Just enough to make a slurry. And we're looking for like a snowball oatmeal consistency. Okay, we'll let that set up once it can support itself. A little firmer. We're going to put a thin layer of slurry across the whole tops of those totes. Okay, and here we are. We've got it capped now. Got some reinforcement wire in there. And we've got kind of a concrete slurry on the top here. We'll let that harden and then go ahead and put a couple layers of dirt on it. Oh, and then you can see here how the buckets turned out. And we just put a bucket lid on them and then you can still access the the hole there, the clean out hole. Oh, and I went ahead and filled it up with water. Kind of get them settled and keep them from moving around. Okay, and here's what we've got. So, so we did a couple layers of sand slurry with the reinforcement mesh that set up. And it really uh, holds the weight of a human nicely. You know, I can stand on there and bounce and it doesn't uh, really do anything. It's good and firm underfoot. So what I did is I took a bunch of gravel, um, some a little bit of sand, and I mixed a bunch of Portland with that too. And uh, I went ahead and put another layer on here today. We'll let this set up, and then I think we'll be good to put dirt on. Now the slurry here, it's probably the equivalent to about a two or a three sack, which means you can still dig through it with uh, probably a Maddox and a shovel in case anything ever needs to be serviced. It's not like trying to break out a you know a five sack concrete pad. It is going to provide some structure, some stability, but it's not going to be impossible to remove. Now I should mention I'm going to take two old retired skill saw blades and set them on the tops of these lids and then I'm going to outline this tank with some uh, ribbon tape, metal ribbon tape um, or you know magnetic locator tape and uh, that's going to make it so that if I ever have to try to find these again, I can. I do a lot of hobby metal detecting and uh, that's going to make it entirely possible to locate these and very easy to locate these in the future. Okay, so here's the finished product. I still haven't plumbed the building in, which is why that's open, but we're standing on top of the tanks right now. I've been watering it down, trying to get it to settle a little bit. And uh, leach field goes out here. Sorry, my truck and trailer are parked on top of the leach field right now. But it's all graded out. And like I said, I just been I've been spraying it down with some water every day, just trying to get it to settle. Uh, my truck's been driving over it, no problem. So, okay, let's talk materials now. Uh, for my trench liner, I stopped at Home Depot on my way out and uh, grabbed this stuff here. They have an actual felt like a French drain trench liner, septic um, leach field liner that percolates water. This stuff right here will percolate water. It's not uh, like a, as long of a lifetime as regular um, trench liner, 
but it does percolate water and if I can get uh, you know X amount of years out of this system that should be fine like I said these systems aren't lifetime systems like a regular leach field it's just a really cheap very cheap DIY alternative to an expensive septic system so I used this on the sides of my trench and then what was protruding above my leach field I folded over and then I buried I put dirt on top of so the bottom of my trench was regular dirt so it will percolate and solids can escape they're not gonna get stuck up against this stuff it's this trench liner is on the sides and on the top just to prevent dirt from intruding so as far as this perf pipe goes I had a few comments on my other video asking about the fall a quarter inch per 10 feet is not very much fall at all and I don't do septic systems but I have a couple of friends that do and I consulted with them what they explained to me was when you install this stuff in a trench like this you don't want a lot of fall to where everything is always going to the end of your leach field because as you can see when you install this you still have a trough in the bottom of that pipe it's going to take maybe a half an inch of water before it can start getting out of those holes and percolating into the soil so the way they explained it to me was if you have a lot of fall you're always going to be putting pressure on the end of your leach field if you have just enough fall to move water away from the tank this whole thing will build up and you'll be using your entire run of holes instead of just always putting pressure on the end I have two 15 foot runs in my leach field and the reason I went with two right next to each other was in the off chance that something happens to obstruct one of them I still have the other one I figured if the trench is open I'm putting all the work in I'm just gonna go ahead and put both pipes in whether both pipes were necessary or not that's that's neither here nor there they're both in there now and I have two one can be considered a backup on that original system I used 45s on my crossover pipe like so and what that does is that prevents solids from getting in to the pipe but it also leaves a little bit of area for to break that that vapor lock you really only need a solids block on your solids tank you know you're never going to have water flowing back the opposite direction so a solids block on the solids tank in hindsight i would not use the t again unless i was using three inch crossover i would definitely use the the 90 and then drill a hole to break the vapor lock and i think that would be sufficient the T's worked. I had to heat them up to make them floppy so that I could fit them into the tank. That was not ideal. So let's go over cost. This stuff here, whether it's perforated or whether it's solid, the triple wall pipe in four inch is about a dollar a foot, roughly. Um, you're gonna have a couple of fittings, not very many, a couple tubes of caulking. I happen to have a source for free totes. You can find those anywhere from 50 to $150 a piece. Um, you can oftentimes, if you if you do your homework, you can find those things for free. Trench liner, not entirely necessary. You know, you can find this stuff for anywhere from $40 to $100 a roll, depending on how much you need. I did not use that on my original system, and my original system, four and a half years later, is still performing just as well as it did the day I put it in. So, just up to you. Now code around here by me requires inch and a half drain rock to bring in a load of drain rock you know full transfer load of drain rock is 600 plus dollars where I'm at I had free concrete rubble available so I opted to go that route and I have about four yards of concrete rubble in my leach field which is far and above what I'll ever need now as far as putting a cap over top of your tank, that's just a matter of preference. This one's going to see a moderate amount of foot activity and maybe some ATVs, etc. over the top of it. So I opted to stabilize it with that, that concrete slurry. Again, if, you, if you're on a budget or if you're not going to see activity over the top of your tank, that's another way to save some cost. I used three bags of raw Portland 
at $10 per bag. So that was $30 to cap that tank. The system that I've had in for four plus years has been performing far and above what I ever expected to get out of it. So again, this is just a alternative to an expensive septic system. I don't think I would be bringing out an inspector and and expect that I'm going to pass, you know, an inspection. But it's a good short-term option for you know an RV dump or an off-grid cabin, something like that.